So you're using Wix and you've built a custom form on your website using inputs and a submit button. You've connected to a collection via a data set. And now after submission, you want to do something. You want to send an email. You want to conditionally send an email or trigger various actions that you would via Wix automations. Welcome back to the Wix Wiz. I'm Eitan. And today we're going to be talking about a new automation trigger. Let me show you it right over here. It is this CMS forms trigger and it will allow you to trigger automations using custom forms. So instead of needing to write some code in order to send that email after a custom form submission, you can now just do it via no code automations. So we're going to talk all about that and more before we get started. I just wanted to remind you that if you don't want to miss out on videos that come out every week, one of which could be that video, which completely changes your site and your business, I'd recommend hitting that subscribe button. Once you've done that, let's get started. For today's tutorial, I am using a blank Wix Studio website, but everything that we're doing here should be possible inside of Wix Classic as well. To get started, I'm going to build a very basic custom form, and then we're going to hop over to the automation part and see what we can do over there. One thing to note is that even though we're not going to be writing any code during this tutorial, I do recommend going over here and turning on code mode uh, if you haven't done so already, or turning on dev mode inside of Wix Classic. That's because turning on dev mode or code mode is going to open up different possibilities in terms of building custom forms, even if we're not using any code. Also, the automation that we're specifically going to be using won't be visible unless you have turned code mode on. So if you've gone ahead and done that, let's start building our custom form. To build a custom form, all we need to do is add in some input elements. So if we go over here to our add elements section, and we can go ahead and look here for input, and you can add a wide variety of inputs, for example, an email input, you could also have different kinds of drop downs, etc. So let me just add in, for example, email. And let's just add in, let's say feedback, just like that. And the last thing that you'll need to add in when you're building a custom form is to add in a button. That is going to be a button that's going to submit the form. So let's just grab a button over here. And I'm going to drag that right over here. And let's just change this for the sake of clarity from get started, change the text here to submit. There we go. So that's a basic custom form. Obviously, you can add in more uh, input elements and stuff like that. The idea behind building a form like this is it should give you more options to customize beyond what using a basic Wix form would do. One key difference between custom forms and the standard Wix drag and drop forms is that the custom forms don't come with a default submission table or co collection, but rather we have to create our own collection and connect these inputs and the submit button to that collection using a data set. So in order to do that, uh, we can go over here and just select, for example, one of the inputs from our custom form. And here you'll see a squiggly line button that says connect to CMS. Uh, once you click on that, you'll have the option to add in a data set right over here. And once we click the option to add in a data set, then we can choose the collection that we want to connect to. If you haven't created a collection already, then you can go ahead and click to create one. I'm going to get started. And let's just start from scratch over here. So this is going to be my custom form submissions. And I'm going to go ahead and click create. And it's initializing this. And here, so Wix has already added in some things for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, but what we can go ahead and just get rid of these uh, right over here. And get rid of this. And get rid of this. And we're going to want to have two things here. So uh, we can have a field here for the email. Just going to click Save. And we're going to have a field, let's say, for the feedback. Uh, those are the two inputs 
we have on our form, but you will go ahead and add in fields here, depending on the data types as well, for all the different things uh, that you might be collecting or different inputs that you have in your custom form. I'm going to go ahead and make this the primary. And I'm going to get rid of this title, just like that. And now we're ready to connect this via the data set. So here you can see it's already selected here, the custom form uh, submission collection, and the data set name is automatically set to this. You can change that if you want. So I'm just going to go ahead there and click Create. And we have one problem that this data set is by default set to read. Uh, but if we go over here into the data set settings, we can change this to be a write data set, which is what we're going to want for a custom form. And now uh, if we go ahead and uh, make sure that our inputs are connected. So this email input, the value should be connected to email. And the feedback we can connect as well. So that would be connect to CMS over here. And it will be connected here to feedback just like that. Let's see, site visitors can't use the input because uh, they don't have the permission. So we can edit the collection permissions. And we can change it here to collect content just like that. And I might need to zoom out over here to save this. There we go, just click Save. And I'm going a little quick here because custom forms is something that we've talked about in depth in some of the other tutorials on the channel. And I really want to focus on the automation part of this tutorial because I think that's the new juicy part here. Um, but I don't want to leave you hanging if you're not sure how to set up the custom form. So I'm just doing the basic setup. Uh, but if you feel like I'm going a little bit fast and you need some assistance, I'd recommend checking out some of the other uh, tutorials on the channel, which touch this topic quite in depth. Um, okay, so we've connected our two inputs. And the final thing we need to do is just connect our button. And we can connect the click action over here to be submit. Okay, we can add also a success message and a failure message uh, that I'm just going to drag over here to be right under the button. So this is a custom form. And now once we fill out this form, if we want, we could just go ahead and stack everything so that it looks nice like that. Um, so if I go ahead and I publish my site now, uh, we can head over to the live site once that's published and fill out the form just so you can see what it looks like once that form is filled out. So here we are on the live site. And I'm just going to fill out example at the Wix wiz.com and feedback how can we improve um give me candy i don't know okay so that's uh the feedback and i'm just going to go ahead and click submit and you see the content has been submitted obviously the design here is not beautiful uh, but if we head back over here to our editor and we pop in here to check out our cms collections open custom form submissions uh, we should see my first submission. So that's setting up a custom form in a nutshell. And now we're really ready to start with the main uh, juicy part of this tutorial, which is how to set up the automations. To set up automations for the custom form, we're going to head over to our dashboard. And you're going to look in your dashboard for the automations section over here, and just click new automation up here on top. Uh, I'm going to start from scratch so that we can choose what our trigger is. And the first thing we're going to do is select a trigger. So what is the initial event which is going to start off this chain of automations? And we're going to want to look for this one right over here, which is uh, CMS. Let's see if I can find it right over here, CMS form. So this is the new automation that is really the highlight of the tutorial today. And the reason that this is so important and really like gives a leg up to people who are using no code but custom forms is that until now when you're using a custom form on a Wix website everything except for what I showed you today so everything we did was no code right but if you wanted to do anything else beyond that submission you would need code so you would need to if you wanted to send an email for example you would need to create a triggered email, which would be triggered by code. Uh, if you wanted to do some kind of something in your back end after the form submission, 
pretty much everything there would need code. But now with this new CMS form submitted automation, we essentially can create automations for custom forms with no code. So now that we've selected the trigger, the next thing we have to do is decide what is going to trigger, uh, which specific form submissions are going to trigger. So you can have it set to be any, which means that this automation will run no matter which custom form is submitted on your site. Unlikely that that's going to be your choice. So we're going to pick specific over here, and then we can say a specific um, data set, essentially, which is going to trigger this um, trigger this automation. So here we have only one because we set up only one custom form, but potentially you would see a list here of different custom forms on your site. And here we can see home custom form submissions data set, submit into custom form submissions collection. Okay, so it's kind of just a summary of the data set that we have set up and the action that we have set up um, and what the trigger is essentially going to be, which is going to be submission into the collection. Uh, this, the language here hints to the fact that there could be more versatile things, like it could be potentially uh, on an update as well or different changes. So there's what to explore here. But I think that the scenario that we have set up for today is the probably the more standard and more popular use case. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that and click OK. And that's pretty much it. I mean, from here on, uh, the sky is the limit and you can continue on this path doing any kind of automation that you would do with other automations on your site. So for example, uh, we can go over here and add a step. Uh, so for example, we can add in an action. And a very typical use case, I think, would be to send an email. Uh, and once we send an email over here, uh, so we can, you know, you can decide what the recipients are, you can edit the template. I think one interesting thing to explore here would be to see if we have ac access to the different, um, we can access different variables from the collection in order to populate those variables in the template. So you'll notice here that I need to add in uh, sender details. So let me just go ahead and quickly add in those sender details so we could send an email. And uh, let's pop into the template and see what we can do. I've got my sender set up now. So let's go ahead and edit that template. And here we are inside of the template. And in order to add in a variable, uh, we can go over here, for example, to the text. Let's add in a new line over here. And uh, let's add here, add personalized content. And let's see what values we have access to here. So we have form ID. Let's see, email, created date, feedback. OK. Uh, and let's see if we have email. Yeah, we have email here as well. OK, so we have access essentially inside of the email to the different variables. So for example, I could select feedback over here. And then here I can change this and we say, let's say we got your feedback. This is what you wrote. And then it would show them the feedback that they actually wrote over here. OK, and obviously this is a very, very simple uh, use case, but you can build much more complicated things with your custom forms and much more complicated uh, emails, etc. cetera. Uh, so then just save and continue, and the rest is, uh, is history. And you can add more actions in addition to that. Uh, you can add also different things here, like conditions. Um, like, for example, if they, uh, let's see if we have access here to the form properties as well, right? So feedback. Um, here we didn't really have any drop downs or anything like that, but imagine you had like a drop down field that had like three options, and then based on a certain option, you can send a different email, and it goes on and on and on. So I don't want to make this like a gen general automations tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about automations, uh, leave a comment uh, below, and maybe that will be a tutorial in the future. But I really wanted to focus on this specific new trigger because I think it really opens up doors in terms of what you can do uh, with custom forms if you have no coding skills at all or you don't feel like coding <laughs> for some reason. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with not coding, even if you know how. Uh, that's going to be all for today. 
If you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss out on content that comes out weekly just like this or on other topics related to the Wix ecosystem, hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.